welcome to the second the great song. Today I'm with Cedric Sunday. I really appreciate you having me. Okay. I mean, I'm excited to be with you and uh, and to talk through some things with you. And thanks again. I appreciate it. So how's you going? Uh, going well. You know, I I just feel pretty pretty fortunate. Um, my wife, uh, my I have four children, and just um, I just feel real blessed to have the family that I do and larger extended family in my community. Um, the uh, communities I come from, having been raised in Key West, Florida, and also on my tribe's reservation in Alabama, and then my wife's family as well, who are Kiowa and Ponca. So um, we we spend a lot of time with family, that's for sure. Right. A lot of time, so it's it's good. And then we have our church family here at uh, First American United Methodist Church here, the uh, Indian Church in Norman, Oklahoma. So yeah, it's gonna be good. Oh. So I hear that you're a coach in sport. Yeah, I've, I've coached for a lot of years, a lot. So uh, about 19 years I've coached at the high school, junior high, and university level. And I've coached uh, soccer and basketball at that level. Was that fun? Super fun. I really, really enjoy it. I've... Um, it's, it's just been something I've also coached recreational sports, uh, coaching many teams as well as my own children's teams as they've grown up. And our oldest is 15 now, and I've had the chance to coach her in soccer, I think, when she started when she was about three or four. And uh, that was that was a joy. And I just recently um, stopped coaching, but I'm very involved in athletic recruitment for the university I work at. So I, I talk with lots of families and lots of students and get them to you provide them the opportunity to come and play for our university if they so choose to do so. so uh-huh. It's been pretty good. Do you like sports? I love sports. Yeah, um, yeah. I grew up playing um, soccer and basketball and football. I was the worst baseball player you've ever seen in your life. I, I used to strike out in t-ball, so nobody would ever pick me on their baseball team. That's for sure. I can't blame them. <laughs> but um, the other sports really helped me. I played both soccer and basketball in university, so that was a lot of fun. And then got the opportunity to go on and um, be a college coach as well. So, it's sports have been, I guess, an essential part of my life. Mm-hmm. They've been an essential part of my life, and I feel fortunate. One of the things when I was coaching, I was coaching at Kellen Stony Point First Nation, which is a First Nation community in Ontario, Canada. My mother's originally from Ontario, Canada, and so when I was living up there in my twenties. When I was teaching there, I had a young man, his name was Jordan Brown, and Jordan truly was somebody that I just, I don't think a day has gone by, you know, in, in all the years that I don't think about and, and hope that he's in a, in a wonderful place. But Jordan was, um, has cerebral palsy and was in a wheelchair. And one of the things that I know that could be a benefit to him in speaking with him was the opportunity to play on the teams at the middle school. And so what I would do is that he played on all of our sports teams. I got him out there. So the first time in his life, uh, myself and a friend of mine, he had the opportunity uh, through the two of us to, to play. And so we would wheel him around on the basketball court. And then in the soccer, we put him on the soccer team as well. And I'll never forget. It's like one of the greatest. It's the greatest sports moment I've ever been a part of, to be quite honest with you. Um, and that's, you know, that's certainly saying something because I had the opportunity to play at the university level and and you know just all those kind of things and playing some big games you know but we were at a soccer game and a ball got punted by the goalkeeper and i was wheeling jordan around on the field because it's it's difficult to push the wheelchair on the field because of all the grass right and so it didn't it wasn't as smooth so i would push around he says go coach go and so i ran under that ball as quickly as i could (laughs) And that ball came down and hit him square in the face and busted his nose a little bit and went into the goal. He scored. And it might have been the coolest 
experience I've ever had in sports. Yeah. You know, and I can't remember. I can't remember how the ball went in. I just remember somehow after it hit his face, um, and he got hurt, but he didn't even have any pain because it was such an exciting moment. And somehow after that ball hit his face, I don't know if it bounced off someone else. I'm not sure to be honest with you, but I know I looked, and that ball was in the back of the goal, and we were all going crazy. So it was a really, really great. Um, it was a great experience, and it kind of taught me the power of sports because I think sometimes sports in this country in particular and in other countries can, can be abused. Um, and we kind of create superstars um, out of people when we don't necessarily need to do that. But in these in these types of cases, sports can be an incredible vehicle uh, of opportunity. So it was pretty cool. It was cooler for me than Jordan. I always told him that. So... <laughs> Uh, we've been coming to the church here. We came for about two, two years or so. Um, and then we were visiting churches for probably about another two-year period. And then we came back to this church full-time, uh, I think about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. And we, we really enjoy it here. And um, Pastor Smith has been someone that we really um, look forward to her sermons on Sundays to come in and just always has a very balanced approach to so many issues and really projects, I think, I think what most people who, you know, read about Jesus's life would attest to that if we can put kindness forward first, then we have a better chance in this world. And, and I think she really uh, embodies that, exemplifies that. And I think our, our pastor pretty much lives in a Christ-like way in those, in those ways, in the way she discusses things and, and how she lives her life. And, and I think there's a lot of people in this congregation that we can look out, look up to and see that they live their lives in that way as well. So it's a healthy place to be here. There's a real balance in this church between uh, the gospel message as well as uh, our traditional way of life. You, you know, with some of the tribes that are here are Plains tribes or people from up north who traditionally have sweat lodge within their cultural community. We have a sweat lodge here at the church, uh, behind the church. Um, for those other Plains tribes who are involved in the NAC, the Native American Church, we have uh, the TP back here as well that those ceremonies are conducted in. Uh, for Southeastern tribes, we have stomp dances regularly here at the church grounds as well as uh, gourd dances uh, for the other Plains uh, communities. So it's just a really uh, welcoming place. So, you know, you, it's a good place to be. <laughs> it's a good place to be. I think for me, my upbringing was away from two places. I, I didn't grow up in white America and I didn't grow up within the American Indian community. So I grew up on the island of uh, Key West, Florida and the community down there, the traditional people, the people that are of the island, are called conks. And they're a mix between white Bahamian, black Bahamian, and Cubans of various shades um, that had mixed into one basic uh, cultural group, ethnic group. And so I was raised uh, the first 18 years of my life within the context of that cultural group. My, my parents had moved there. They had eloped. My mother's from Canada. My dad's from Alabama. And they had met when my mom, uh, excuse me, when my fa when my my father's dad was stationed on an American military base in Canada at the end of his military career. My mom was raised in the community of Goderidge in Port Albert, Ontario, which is right on Lake Huron, and she was working at a provincial park when she was a teen. Uh, my father was a teen, and they met, and they literally took off and moved to Alabama and lasted there for solely a year. Uh, the racial prejudice at the time in the late 1960s was so extreme that um, my mom, they had some really bad experiences, the two of them together, including 
them getting hunted down in a state park uh, by three white males who shot rifles at them and said they shouldn't be there and be together and all those types of issues. And my mom also worked at a restaurant where my dad wasn't allowed to come to the front. He had to work in the back. Um, the blacks and Indians uh, from the area had to get their food um, basically away from the others. I mean, it's just really a stratified place. They then, um, my mom also worked in a movie theater where she had to count the amount of people of color that came into the movie theater. And so I think all these things were very problematic. And my mom, just uh, being from Ontario, which of course has its own history of racism, but she wasn't as connected to deep Southern racism. And she said, I'm either divorcing you or we're leaving. And so they moved as far away as they could from their families. They went all the way down to the Florida Keys, uh, the southernmost point. My dad got involved in the marijuana and cocaine trades, then uh, became a rather prominent player in that in the 1970s. Uh, and then he died. Um, he, he was killed basically in uh, Christmas Day of 1978 while he was in his own plane and they were transporting uh, drugs at that time. And uh, the plane went down. So because of that, my mom, she really never talked about her heritage growing up. She didn't talk about my dad. They had already divorced by the time I was age two. My dad died when I was four. And so I was just raised in the conk community. And then when I was 18, I signed to college, you know, I signed to play ball in college and went off to university. And that first semester, I just got in a car and drove down to my dad's reservation community and just really kind of connected with my dad's family for the first substantive time during my life. And um, by the time I was 20 years old, I moved up to Canada and connected with my mother's family. And that's when I really started to learn more so about, you know, the her the racial heritage and ethnic heritage of my two parents. But I still consider myself a conk uh, foremost because that was the cultural community I was raised in, I was fully accepted in. Um, and that I, you know, those are pretty substantial years, your first 18 years of life. So, but you know, from that point, I've learned a lot I've learned a lot from my dad's uh, family, the Moabana Choctaw Indians, the community there. I've learned about the Koyonokusha, the little people, some of the first stories I learned in the community and have been able to share those with our kids and just lots of um, positive stories about uh, Nanichaha. Um, Nanichaha is what we call High Hill in our community. Of course, Nanewaya that I was alluding to is uh, in Mississippi. And so those, how those stories kind of compete with one another on origin stories and things like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's been really interesting. And then of course, through my wife's family, their Kiowas, um, and they have lots and lots of stories. I was fortunate to help my wife's mom edit a book that was published by Sam Noble Museum here at the University of Oklahoma about traditional Kiowa stories. And um, it, it's been, it's been good it's been positive. And, uh... That's a really cool. Mm. I met you too. I met you I be? If you were a food. If I were a food, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> if I was a food, boy, I tell you what, if I was a food, um, I would say I have peaches because I love peaches, but I'm not that sweet. So I can't be a peach because I got, I, got I got a different, I got a tough side to me too. Um, let me see if I was a food. I guess, I guess uh, just because of where I grew up, I'd have to be some uh, black beans and yellow rice. That's good Cuban food. <laughs> <laughs> Black yeah. means a big mix of stuff, you know, because that's kind of how I am. That's kind of how I am culturally and racially, and I'm a big mix. Mm. I'm a big mix of stuff, so that's uh, that's probably what I'd be, some black beans and rice. <laughs> well, it, it was great talking to you. Thank you for being on my show. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it.
I'm, well, I might be famous now that I'm on your show. So <laughs> thanks a lot. Well, I appreciate it. Power. <laughs> <laughs>